Roundabouts. A lovely way for children to have fun. Wrong. It's the perfect apparatus to study the relationship between circular motion, momentum and human strength, with some bumps and bruises along the way. There isn't a scientific law that says if you smack him on the head, he'll go faster. But there is a scientific force that you need to understand and apply if you want to stay on a roundabout spinning at speed. <laughs> Centripetal force is the force you must apply to stay on. It's as simple as holding on. Well, it is holding on. But holding on to a roundabout isn't always simple. The closer you are to the centre of the roundabout, the less centripetal force is needed to cling on. The further you go from the centre, the harder it is to hold on, because the roundabout spins faster on the outside. To make matters worse, if you double the spin speed, you need four times the strength to cling on. Remember, if you're hanging onto a roundabout at the edge, it doesn't take much of a spin speed to produce the same g-force you'd experience hanging from the ceiling. Even at just 1G, muscular fatigue means it's just a matter of time until you fall off. But is anyone listening? Two mistakes here. This chap's forgotten that the roundabout spins fastest on the outside. He's also in a dustbin. Ah, he's got it now, a central position, easier to hold on. But the, the dustbin thing is still an issue. You can turn a roundabout upside down and make it higher. But you will still need centripetal force to hold on. What was it we said about doubling spin speed? Oh yeah, it quadruples centripetal force needed to hold on. That's about 3G. In other words, you have to hold against three times your own body weight. Or not. The boy in green knows he's the heaviest and will need the most centripetal force to hold on. But position on the roundabout is everything. His small friend at the centre can hold on. At its rim, this roundabout spins at about 2G, meaning most people can't hold on. As he's just found out. 